Bolt deck. Now, Raging Bolt's interesting. So I feel like these, these are two decks that are going to get ready here. Looking here for Iori, we do see the one copy of Luminion and the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. And then over for James Hasbro, the Fire Catcher and the Squawker Billy. They are both very important cards. So both players do have some important resources there in the prize cards. It's not ideal. And that Iron Valiant is huge because 220 used to be the magic number. Yeah. For Pokemon V, 220 was the number you were looking to hit. But for Pokemon EXs, 230 and 240 is increasingly common. 220 is often not enough, but Iron Valiant dropping those two damage counters, getting you from 220 to 240 makes a gigantic difference. And in this matchup especially, that is how you get that Raging Bolt. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are rolling with round 11, and we got a Teal Dance from Teal Mask Ogapom. Attach an energy, draw a card, play a trekking shoes and i tell you what there's a lot of good hikes in hawaii those trekking shoes are going to come in handy that's it james putting his shoes on again off to the races fantastic style you're going to play that earth and vessel but this card of professor sardis vitality a very important card that will be look, utilized a lot here for james letting you attach one basic energy to an ancient box well two basic energy to two different ancient pokemon that's going to give you an 140 damage swing there for that bellowing thunder yeah, that is quite nice, as is going second. And here's the thing, this is one of those classic matchups. Take a two-prize knockout, and then just do that every turn. Take yes. the first one and keep going. Both of these decks are very capable of getting a two-prize knockout, turn one going second. Now, Iori will need to use Iron Valiant to take out that Raging Bolt. Yep. And a started Squawker Billy in the active, although to be fair, you still need to switch Iron Valiant into the active. Yes. But that is going to be what we're looking for. If Iori can take that KO turn one, that is going to put them in a great position. So decent start from James, get some energy down. Now it's over to Iori here. And the question is really simple. Can you KO that Raging Bolt? Yeah, it looks like Iori there is just going to do a little prize check here as he's going to play that Nest Ball, going to work out what is available to him. And I think having that Blood Loon Ursa Luna in the prizes is quite sad because that, is, that does do a crisp 240. That would have been a great attacker in the mid to late game, but not quite available now. And just looking through the deck there, did obviously prize one copy of the Maridon and the Luminion as well. So they will not be available to him, at least for now. And what is actually quite annoying there, that Blood Moon Ursa Luna is in the top two prizes. Traditionally, yep. players take bottom to top. And if you're taking two prize knockouts, there's a very good chance that Blood Moon Ursa Luna actually doesn't come out at all. And like you say, when you get to the late game and its attack gets cheaper and cheaper, it gets so much better. But there's something else I've noticed in this deck list I think you need to know about what Iori's playing. It's a bit of a secret, but I like you guys, so I'm going to tell you, secret box. That is the ace spec we've got in Iori's deck list here. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Not one we see too often, but it can be rather strong. You can only use it if you discard three cards from your hand. But if you do, you can search your deck for an item, a tool, a supporter, and a stadium. That's a whole host of things. As we are going to see an electric generator being played, did get one there. As that nest ball did conclude to grab a Maridon. The Maridon has used that tandem unit ability to then pluck a Raikou. And then I uh, can't quite see what the other one was there. Was uh, uh, An Iron Hands was taken as well. That electric generator did hit, and it looked like it's getting attached to that Maridon. Not too shabby. We've got a Raikou, we've got an Iron Hands, we've got a Maridon on the bench. We've hit one energy. You might have seen during Stefan's game yesterday, Academy at night. Oh, here Ooh. we go. I like this. Now we see a boss's orders coming out, bringing Teal Mask Ogapon in the active, so you don't need Iron Valiant for a KO. Then I believe that was Squawk Ability, Squawk and C's ability being used. But it is worth noting, did have to get rid of three copies of Boss's orders there after Squawk and C's. There's only one copy of Boss's orders left, but we do have Electric Generator here in the hand. Doesn't have another basic energy though, so we won't be able to attach for turn, at least for now. So let's see what this generator can do. This could really decide the tempo of this game if we see a kill. That'd be huge but didn't discard any energy and didn't draw energy any from Squawk and Seize. So in theory, there's a, all the energies in the deck. So yep, that should up your chances of hitting from Electric Generator. Because if you're not drawing it or discarding it, it's all there in the deck. So but would need to, would need to move um, the Squawk ability out the active. But you're right, just play a whole like 16 basic energy. So there's a lot in the deck. Here we go, Electric Generator here, Ross. Will we see two little clap? One, yeah, two, of course three. We do. Oh my goodness, can't attach all three, Iori, but two is a mighty fine number. 
Yeah, double hit off the generator. And this is what I've been saying about these Maraidon decks. These new builds can attack with Maraidon a lot more readily than they could in the past. That means that it becomes a great attacker. And you see, I can't get the Iron Valiant. That's too awkward. So let's boss his orders up the Teal Mask Ogre Pawn. If there's a switch here, this is... Oh, we don't need a switch. We've got Beach Court. Was Beach Court? Yeah, there's a gold oh, Beach Court down beach on the board. Court. Oh, my goodness gracious me, Iori. Straight off to the races. Photon Blaster to take his first two prize cards of our round 11 feature match here. James on the back foot. Can he respond? He played it right before the score can seize, and then yes. we got distracted by Electric Generator. Now, there is one Academy at night in the deck, but Beach Court there, great yeah. for that pivot option. And this is what Iori needed. Two prizes, turn one, going second. James has to take a KO this turn. Do we need four energy to KO with that bellowing yes, thunder? Yes, we do, unless there's any kind of other modifier. Free energy will be 210. Moraidon's got 220. So we need four energy on the board discarded with bellowing thunder. And here's a Pokemon, here's a Pokemon catcher, Pokemon though. Catcher. It's, it's a heads. heads. So what are we going to go after here? Going to go after that Raikou. does have, what, 200 HP, I believe. So three energy would get you there. Yep. And we're going to see a power pipe shuffling in the Professor Sada's vitality. But that's very important for James. Going to reuse them as often as possible to reload that bellowing thunder. So James looks like can respond this turn. So the pressure is going to be back on Iori. But Iori has set the temper of this game. First player to falter here. And Mr. Two Prize KO will most likely go one game down. Yeah, James has guaranteed the KO here. The KO is already on the board. Now it is set up your board as well as you can. Now, we do see the KO coming out there. Free energy, KO the Raikou. Here's the thing, though. Iori keeps his energy. Yes. And if I'm the Maridon player, I'm like, yeah. cool. Yeah, have the Raikou, because the Raikou's only a good attacker when James has got a full bench. James doesn't have a full bench. You need to hit 220. That only happens with two full benches. There aren't two full benches. I want Maridon with which to attack. This is where we need Iron Valiant. This would be huge. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here, Shay. What's that? I don't think James is expecting an Iron Valiant to come down and drop two damage counters in a Maridon deck. I think you are correct. I don't think anyone would be expecting that, but that would be absolutely huge. As James did put a um, Bravery Charm on the bench, Till Mask Ogremont, that's going to boost that HP up to 260. So your right. Iron Valiant would be fantastic. That Tachyon Bits. When the Iron Valiant is in the active position, you can put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Active or bench does not matter. It would, it would effectively be a plus 20. But worth noting, we do see that um, Future Booster Energy Capsule is attached to the Iron Hands, so that would be quite hard to maneuver around, as we are going to see an Arvon being played here. Yeah, absolutely. Go and get the Arvon. Go and get what you need. Iron Valiant here is what you're looking for, or a Future Booster Energy Capsule. Our next is not a future Pokemon. It is a future Pokemon, but it's not a future Pokemon. Not the one from Scarlet and Violet. It doesn't get the boost. Because that was before we had Paradox Pokemon officially in the game. Yes. You do need the Iron Valiant to get up to 240. And here we go. And they've actually, this is it. Because you can use a Nest Ball to get the Iron Valiant. Yeah. And then you can get something to switch with off of the Forest Seal Stone. So if Iori wants, oh, it's a Pheasant Dipty instead. I don't mind this going and drawing a bunch of extra cards. Yeah, Fez and Dipsy, that flip the script ability, letting you draw free if any one of your Pokemon was knocked out on your opponent last turn. Very, very strong. And let's see what Iori does. Did grab the Forest Seal Stone as well, so we'll be able to attach that. Looks like flip the script is being activated here. Going to draw three. Well, we got energy, lost, lost back. vacuum, Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball will get the Iron Valiant if you want it. And it looks like we're eyeing up the Ultra Ball here. And here's the thing. You see James put the Bravery Charm onto the Teal Mask Ogapon. Right. James is clearly just thinking, well, hang on a second. You can't KO anything now. But Rhydon only yeah. hits 220. If you knew about the Iron Valiant, might you put the Bravery Charm on your active Raging Bolt? And this is the thing about playing surprises in your deck. James isn't playing around the Iron Valiant, because why would you play around an Iron Valiant in a Maridon deck. Yeah, you're right. You really wouldn't. You just assume that they're going to maximum out at that 220 damage. We are going to see energy attached to 
active iron hands we're going to see a retreat thanks to that future booster energy capsule we're going to see a photon blaster into the active i think Iori might not have had a way to maneuver around the iron Valley if he could grab it so it's going to go for the photon blaster what this does set up though is a three prize amp you very much as well it does or even just a ko of iron valley at next turn oh that is true because james doesn't know about the iron valley there's no reason for james to suspect iron valley and so he's not going to play around it because why would you yeah. because no one plays iron valley in the ride on so there is a way that aurori can actually win next turn iron valiant cheeky drop the damage big ko jobs a good and off you go did see the lost vacuum to remove that bravery charm as well as it is james's turn now going to play an energy retrieval grab two basic energy and did and use teal mask there to attach that glass and draw an extra card james has a does have a lot of options in the hand. Does have the prime catcher. I think that is being played. They're going to bring up that iron hand. Switch raging bolt into the active. Oh no, I don't think it has a press aside though. Oh. So just going to be the burst roar. Discard the hand and draw six. That is a lot of tempo lost there for James. Can Iori win this turn? Well, we know it's possible. Iori absolutely can win possible. this turn. All you need to do is go iron valiant to KO the benched. Uh, you would need some gusting. Um, Prime Catcher is not available because Uri doesn't actually play Prime Catcher. It's a secret box deck. Does play? Uh, there is one copy of Boss's Order still available, though. If you can find if it, yeah. Find there it. is still one copy of Boss's Orders available. But Uri doesn't need to win this turn. No. Because really doesn't. he just needs <laughs> to take two prizes and win next turn. So could have a bit of a quieter turn. So what do we do? Here comes the Ultra. Is it finally time for Iron Valiant? And I would love to see James's reaction if Iron Valiant does come out here, because I don't think James is expecting it. Um, there's other options, but it's all what I would be going for the Iron Valiant right now. I want those cheeky prizes, yeah, personally. Only thing, I don't know if he'll have a way to get it in the active and get it back out. So it might not be available yet. Might go for Mew. The problem is you only got one bent space remaining, so if you play Mew, you're not playing Iron Valiant here. Again, you don't need the Iron Valiant this turn. Iron Valiant next turn will be fine. The issue is you need to, you don't even really need two prizes this turn. To be honest with you, James can take two on his next turn, then you can take four because you've got the easy Iron Valiant knockout. So you don't have to actually do much this turn. So that's going to free up a bench spot there from that hyper blow. We're going to force James to swap the active. Oh, now, I Lost Vacuum is in hand, remember, folks. We could see that bravery charm get removed, and then we could see a retreat into a photon blaster KO. That is a possibility. This is huge. I think that's probably what we're going to... Okay, so we see an energy on the Mew. Ooh, remember, Mew is, is a... That is so good as well, that genome hacking. Here, Here goes we go. Vacuum, they're going to remove James' little smile there, thinking, uh-oh, didn't expect that free retreat into the Photon Blaster KO, as Aori will take two more prize cards and only has two more left to take here. James, what can you do? Unfortunately, well, maybe not that much. Remember, the Easy Iron Valiant KO, yeah. we keep talking about it. Aori hasn't needed to take it yet, so hasn't taken it yet. But all Yori needs to do is just bench Iron Valley and get it in the active. Boom! Win! Do you know what else Yori could do is attach one more energy, Genome Hack, to copy Bellowing Thunder, discard all your energy, and that would be a fantastic way to do some damage as well. Multiple ways to win. And let's see what James can do here. Hasn't really done too much here. We're going to have to see a KO at the very least. These are two decks that rely on big, fast KOs. Iori has been getting those big, fast KOs. James has not. And it's been as simple as that. James has had to take turns off. Iori hasn't had to take turns off. And, you know, the, the closest Iori got was leaving a Raging Bolt on 20 damage remaining. So it looks like James did play a Pokey Stop. Didn't quite get to see the conclusion of that. But I think we saw at least one item try. Oh, there's a Bravery Charm at the top. So I think there was two cards hit there. Didn't quite get to see what they were, though, unfortunately. But there has been a staging replacement now. We do see a Teal Mask Ogre Pond hit the bench as well. Yeah, Aori's got so many routes to victory next turn, whether that's KOing the Teal Mask Ogapon, whether it's Iron Valiant, whether it's trying to get a big KO with Mew copying Raging Bolt's Bellowing Thunder. There's are a lot of ways for Yori to win and go up one game. What James really needs to do here is at least even up the prize trade. Ooh. Give himself a chance next turn. What have you seen, Shay? We did get the Professor Sada. I think that was needed so we can actually get the second energy onto the... Raging Bolt. We are going to see a Pokey Gear 3.0 being played. That looks like that's going to fail, unfortunately. He's going to shuffle those cards back in the deck. But the Professor Starter's Vitality has been found. 
Okay, so that's going to get more energy on the board. That's going to give... And getting rid of the energy alone is pretty good. Right now, remember, he always only had one attacker all game. It's been that yeah. one Maridon. Maridon has taken all three attacks so far, dealing that 220. And there's free energy on the board if you want to copy something like Bellowing Thunder. Well, you know, losing free energy is going to be kind of annoying, honestly. Yes. And uh, it will actually leave an energy. You'll have to attach another... You'll have to attach two energy next turn in order to Bellowing Thunder. Right. Here, here we, go. we go. Big KO. And look, it really is as simple as if you can just play an Iron Valiant and retreat into it, you win the game right here. Come on. I promise you guys, the deck list says there's an Iron Valiant in this deck. We're looking at it right now. It says it's there. Oh, so we're going to see uh, Bench Maraud. I'm going to activate Tandem Unit. It's going to consult the deck. Iron Valiant is there. Well, this is going to just go for Aluminium Boss's orders, I think, by the looks there of it. There we go. Aluminium comes down. Search for Boss's orders. And though we're not there yet, we're bringing up. There we go. Bring it up. Cop what are we attacking? We're attacking with a Mew? Wow. We're attacking with something. We're getting a KO. And we have got the game. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Shay, here. Because I think the people at home might think I'm misleading them. And I promise you, <laughs> I'm not. Why? Tell me, Shay. Why did we not see Iron Valley in that game? I think he always been a bit of a cheeky and said, I don't want to reveal that. Like, I was in such a commanding position that I don't want to show that that is so, so James can't play around it, right? Like, sure, you could have just popped it out there and won, but if James is, isn't going to play around that Tachyon Bits threat, that's going to really leave Iori in a stronger position for games two and maybe a game three. That that's, my, that's my prediction. No, that's the answer. That is exactly what I was going for here. I would love, I mean, look, I like the big fancy finishes. Let's go to have a little bit of a replay. We can talk about this more in a minute. Let's see how game one went. And we saw that super quick start where we got the double energy off of Electric Generator, putting free energy on Maridon, taking that first KO on the Teal Mask Ogapom after the boss's orders. And Iori just never let up from there. No, and you're right. And James did his best. He did have the Bellowing Thunder response KO. Did need to do that, but it wasn't on the Maraidon. So this Maraidon could just keep swinging over and over again. The Lost Vacuum Edition, removing that Bravery Charm. And from there, James was just constantly on the back foot. Did get a big Bellowing Thunder there in the mid to late game, but Iori was able to close the game out there with the boss's orders and take the first game there in our Swiss Round 11 here at the World Championships. Currently 1-0 up. James will have to do the reverse sweep here if he wants to secure himself or at least attempt to secure himself a slot in our top cut. Absolutely. And here's the thing. Iron Valiant, I love these big flourishy finishes. But actually, I already did things correctly. If you've got something that can provide a big surprise that your opponent really has to play around but doesn't know they have to play around, don't show it in game one unless you have to. Because then in game two, your opponent still isn't playing around it. And then you can go and get yourself that win. So if anyone's thinking I was misleading you, no, 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 no. Yeah. Iori's just doing things very, very carefully. And I love it. So it looks like both players are shuffling up. I think James Martin on Mulligan is going to shuffle up there. And if, if you're James, just thinking, all right. You know, my opponent went off to the races a little bit here. Uh, maybe they don't do that again. Maybe I take the first two prize KO, and all of a sudden, I'm the one dictating the pace of the game. And, then, you know, Raging Bot is perfectly capable of doing that, right? Uh, as it looks like James is going to put the prize card down currently. Iori is one game up here. And let's see how this game is going to unfold both players. It looks like James has opted for Iori to go first. And oh, that, absolutely. And that gives us an opinion on how he's going to approach this game. We just saw what happened when you let Iori go second. It did not go great. So here we see the Squawk and Seize the Squawk ability. Now, this is the opposite to game one. Free energy hitting the discard nice and early. Not even any real good ways to places to attach them. Going to hurt for your electric generator later. But we do have Blood Moon Ursa Luna that's a really good attacker that we never got to see in game one. Yeah, just 240 damage for a start. Good number. And then that season skill ability lets you reduce one colorless attack cost for each uh, prize card your opponent has taken. So James will have to keep an eye on that. He already did use a squawk and seize there. Has a nice full, well, not a full bench, but a lot of Pokemon. Let's it generate a turn one here. This will have to go to the Iron Hands, but let's see what we get. Ooh, and it's a two! Double hit! He always like a happy. But I'll say, in this matchup, I don't love Iron Hands as much. No. I want free energy on my ride on hit 220 all day long. 
But However, it did take three prize cards on a Squawker Billy, though. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> unless I'm hitting into a Squawker Billy, in which case I am absolutely fine with it. But I do think that if you're looking at the Iron Hands now, you're thinking, OK, yeah. kind of got to go into Squawker Billy here. Yes. As it looks like, I think that was a switch card being played there or something along those lines. I think we're going to see a restart to draw one. Uh, another electric generator. Is he going to use it? That would, be, that would be too used, though. And like you said, Iron Hands is good. It's probably not the main attacker. So he already doesn't going to opt to use that. Academy at Night was also played there. And now it's over to James. Uh-oh. That is a bad hand. That is gonna, it, I'll tell you what that hand is. That's a Squawk and Seeds hand if I've ever seen. Academy at Night going to preserve that Professor Sada. Love to see that. And we're going to see three copies of Basic Energy. Nice colourful discard pile there. As well as some Earth and Vest. Now this hand, we can start to cook with this hand, that's for sure. Yeah, go and get a Raging Bolt with your Nest Ball. You've got a Teal Mask Gogapon already ready to go. You have lost a bunch of energy, but of course that can be brought back with Professor Sada. But you also lost two Earth and Vessel. Yeah. So your energy is going to be a bit more awkward to get this game going forward, I think it's fair to say. Oh, as a side note, prizes-wise, there are free energy prize for Iori, which is less than ideal, and the Forest Seal Stone. But there's nothing major for either player. But I think Iori's had the worst of the yeah. prizes here. I would agree. I would agree with that as well. So we're going to see the Poke stop being played there. Can't quite see it. Oh, double catcher and a Teal Mask Ogre Pond. So I going to have to get sent to the discard pile. But Pokemon catcher, that would be very nice. So that won't be able to hit into that uh, Iron Bundle. I know James really doesn't want to hit into that if he can. No. Professor Side of Vitality, only the one target, unfortunately. That's only going to be one energy. But we'll get to draw three. Obviously, Teal, Mar Teal Dance can still um, attach energy as well. There we go. Teal Dance, draw one. And here's the problem for James here. Iori's gone, hey, fun news. Uh, I'm going to leave a one prizer in the active, so it's pointless for you to KO it. Oh, and actually, James is also being let down by the Professor Sada, only giving half value. This has not been a great turn one for James. You certainly don't want to overextend to discard two energy to get a big KO on Iron Bundle. But you don't have any single prizes. I mean, maybe Sandy Shocks you could leave in the active? Maybe? Well, we do have to see, we do see the Pokemon catcher, so we'll be able to try and go around the Iron Bundle if you like. Um, and does have loads of energy in play from the Teal Dance. So we're going to see a manual attachment. So now, how do we get out the active, though, actually? I'm, I'm not sure we can. Uh, oh, there's a switch, switch card, card in hand. I apologize. But you so have to hit heads off catcher. Oh, there's two go. in hand. There's, there's two in hand off the focus up. Here's the first one. The Tails. Go on, James. Show us this the one in huge. Hey, oh, okay. And we see it. Okay. Okay. And it looks like we are going to chase the energy here on that Iron Hands. I love that. Going to remove all the energy. Switch cart going to switch that Squawker Billy out of the active. Now Raging Bolt's going to come into the active position there and bellow some thunder. And James takes our first two points KO here in our game two round 11. Now the pressure is on Iori. Yeah, Iori here going second. Going second is where you want to be. Iori had to go first. James got the turn one KO going second. Had to use a lot of resources, had to try two Pokemon Catcher, but eventually got the KO, okay? Yep. Now it's up to Iori, but the problem is, not only do you have to keep the KOs rolling, you have to hope James falters. Because if James just KO, 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 that's the game for James. This is how these kind of decks roll. Looks like we saw the poke stop being used there, and I think two cards hit the discard pile, so that would assume that Iori got one card. Looks like our boss's orders is at the top. So that would, would imagine that that got discarded at the very least. And let's see, Ultra will going to be played here. I imagine it's going to grab the Maraidon, so you can start using Tandem Unit, perhaps. Might be a Raikou instead. And it's like we said a lot with two, you know, it's a two energy attacker. No, we do. OK, so we get the Maraidon, which will get the Raikou. Yep, so Maraidon activate Tandem Unit to then grab the Raikou there, uh, Raikou as there as well. Tandem Unit ability is so good, letting you grab any two basic lightning Pokemon and put them straight on your bench. Uh, you know, players, you've been playing for a while there, remember Battle VIP Pass, you've eventually got that on an ability you can use every turn. Absolutely incredible. Electric Generator here being played, Ross. One, two, three, four, five. There's a lot of energy in the discard pile. Just the one. Yeah, there's a lot of energy in the discard. You had all your energy removed during James's previous turn. It means hitting energy off the electric generator becomes much better. But that's why we put it on the Raikou. It's a two energy attacker. 
worth noting, it looks like off the Pokestop, that item that was hit was the secret box. Now, you would have to discard three cards to use it. So even with Restart, you won't actually be able to use it right now. But that would be an option for Iori. Yeah, coming up later on in the game. Well, we could see a retreat into Fleet Footed. At that point, this, it could you see... Oh, is this oh no, Iori's just going I to concede. I like yeah. this concession from Iori. That. Saying, look, you know what? You went second. You got the first KO. Yeah. James, have game two because you took the first KO. I'm struggling a little bit. But hey, guess what? Guess who's going first in game three? It's going to be me, mate. <laughs> We're going to try and have a repeat of game one. So James wins game two, but a very tactical concession from Iori. Maybe you can claw that game back, but the most likely result is you're going to lose in 10, 15 minutes time. And yes. then you're going to have a short game three. But you know what? You get to choose to go second in game three. Let's have the maximum amount of time. This could be the difference. Remember what we said? What do we say? If we get a win and a tie from this point, you're on 29 points. That may or may not be enough. You get two wins. You're on 31 points. That almost certainly will be enough. Don't play for the tie. Play for the win. I 100% agree with that. A tie isn't really what both players want to see. So we're going to need enough time to conclude a game three here. So Iori would have been very tough to get back in that game. Worth noting though, we still haven't seen the Iron Valiant reveal yet. So game still weren't, isn't aware of that. Hasn't even seen the A-spec being used either, I think. So there's quite a few unknowns there for James, but would like, but most likely going first here. So can Iori get a, 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 a replica of game one or will James be able to claw it back? We're going to have a very exciting game three here, folks. Two explosive decks going to try and take six prizes as fast as possible. And quite honestly, Ross, I can't wait to see how this is going to pan out. This one's going to be fun. Here's a question, though. Okay. Do you think anyone at home actually thinks we've misread the deck list and Iron Valiant isn't in there? Because <laughs> we have checked, and I promise you, Iori is playing Iron Valiant in Maridon. It is in there. And... I want to see James's reaction if that comes out to take a big KO because look I've played with and against Maridon a lot and I am not ever expecting Iron Valiant. I don't play it in my list. I don't ever see it when I play against it. We haven't seen it in the other list we've had on stream. But this is one of the cool things about the World Championships. Japanese deck lists tend to look a little bit different than American or European deck lists. And this is one of those changes that maybe in Japan a lot more people are playing this. Although, I haven't seen it myself, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like James has Mulligan at least two times here. Then that's going to give Iori two more resources to work with. It's going to make that turn to KO much easier, I would imagine. James, it's like, has got a basic this time. So we'll be able to start the game. As prize cards are going to be dealt now there for James. Worth noting, Iori has prized that secret box and the Mui X. And James has prized two copies of energy retrieval. But it looks like our game three is starting here. Over to James. He has top deck, has led the Raging Bolt. Yes, we're the best lead you can have. Trekking shoes into Poke Gear. Game three, here we go. And we are going to see a Teal Dance activation there from the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. A manual attachment to the active. And it looks like, oh, another Teal Mask Ogre Pond getting benched. And I imagine we'll see a pass here. That is a decent turn one. You've got two Teal Mask Ogre Pond down, two energy on the board. Right, here we go. We've been saying it the whole time. He already started with Luminion. That's actually sneaky and annoying. She can't use the ability. And you don't have access to Mew or Secret Box. But the question, because they're prized. Yeah. But then the question becomes, can Iori go here and get this turn one KO? If Iori can, then they are absolutely in the driver's seat for this game three in round 11. If they can't, that opens up the door for James. And we said it a lot, but I cannot stress it enough. First KO in this matchup, absolutely crucial. And there we can see Iori's prize cards there, secret box and the Mew. EX aren't going to be useful, well, aren't going to be able or available to Iori at least for now. Now, Iori has a couple of hurdles has to get through this turn one if he wants to try and get a KO. Has to maneuver this Luminion out the active, that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, we could see a KO on the Raging Bolt, right, via Iron Valiant and a Photon Blaster, but I think it might be easier to use that Iron Bundle to sort of push that out the active and then get access to the 210 HP Till Mask Ogre Pond. So let's see what Iori opts to do. The Arvin does conclude grabbing a Nest Ball and a forest seal stone. Now remember that forest seal stone can be attached to that active Luminion V, give you access to that star alchemy that will allow you, that will allow you to grab any card you like from your deck. Nest ball being played here, also I would imagine we'll be seeing the um, Maridon 
tandem unit, grab two more, or grab another one, and then use that tandem unit to maybe grab some more as well. Yeah, that is a great thing about tandem unit. You get to grab two lightning Pokemon, but one of them can be aim a ride on that gets you more lightning Pokemon. I agree with you, incidentally, about the Iron Bundle. One of the cool things about Iron Bundle is if your opponent only has one bench Pokemon, or in this case two, but they're basically the same, yep. you can force them up. It's kind of like a Pokemon catcher without the coin flip or a boss's orders, but it's not your supporter for the turn. It means it, you can basically force something into the active rather than giving your opponent a true choice. I say basically the same, because one does have an energy, that won't be the one promoted from an Iron Bundle. We are going to see that Star Alchemy activation here as well, Ross. So let's see what Aori opts to take here. Going to be that Squawk and Seize. I like that, because that actual hand for Aori wasn't the greatest. I thought there was a lot of energy, so we don't really need them. We need to see Electric Generator. So let's see how the Squawk and Seize will treat Aori. I love that ability. Only use it on your first turn, but if you do, discard your hand and draw six. Fantastic attack here. Yeah, love it. It's only for turn one, but it's a phenomenal option on turn one. So Ooh. get yourself a new hand. You don't really want to discard a bunch of energy. We've got an electric generator coming Ooh. down here. Hits one energy. Not perfect, not terrible, but at least we get some energy down. We will need a second electric generator to be attacking this turn, though. Maridon does not do it with one. And remember, Raikou can start getting KOs if James has a full bench. Don't think it's a coincidence that James never has a full bench in this matchup. Yep. He's playing around Raikou. Yep, you are correct. We're going to see a manual attachment to the Marauder. That's got, that got two energy on it. We are going to see if it was that switch card. It's going to get Raikou in the active. So can you split foot it to draw a card if you like? We're going to bench Squawk Billy EX and Squawk and Seize activation. Now let's see how these new six cards will treat Eori. We need to realistically see an electric generator. Switching cards would help as well. And it's really upsetting. Secret Box would be a great card to hit. Mew EX would be a great card to hit. Neither of those are options. So we got an energy attachment for the turn. Would love to see an electric generator, and I would love to see an iron bundle. We've oh, got a no. switch card. Right. Now, again, what we can do is if we can hit 220, but we can't hit 220. Pheasant Dipty only works after a KO. Mew is prize, Secret Box is prize. I don't think Iori's got a route here to getting a turn one attack. Nope, there was no electric generator there in that hand, so no extra energy will be played. You can sort of tell by the body language there on Iori. looks a little bit uh, disheartened. There. So it looks like we're going to see a tandem unit activation. I think that was a failed search there as well. Now, this gives James an, op an opportunity to really start to apply that pressure. If we can see a big bellowing thunder KO, maybe even with some sort of gust, so you can try and KO that uh, Maraud and remove energy, that could really be backbreaking here for Iori. And it's worth pointing out that going first, you have already had a setup turn. You've already yeah. got some Pokemon down. You've attached some energy. So it means that big KO on turn two becomes that much easier. And it is a pass from Iori. There is no turn one KO. That is huge for both players. And with 18 minutes left, that means James is really on the offensive Ooh. here. Tails on Pokemon Catcher, not a good start but does have Prime Catcher in hand. Does have Prime Catcher in hand. We did see the Beach Court retreat there for me to get that Raikou out of the active. We do see a staging replacement for a Pokey stop. And we are going to see an Iron-O being played here. So that means we're not going to see a Professor Sada. That's not an option now. But Chill Dance can get you there. We need to see a Fighting Energy there though, to attack with... Uh-oh. I did not see a Fighting Energy or a way to get one, at least for now. No, Pheasant Dipti only works after a KO, like we keep saying. Squawkabilly is not an option because it's not turn one. Radiant Greninja, however, could yep. get there. So use Radiant Greninja, discard the energy. That thing is a grass energy in hand. Yep. That will allow you to draw a couple of extra cards. Lightning as well. Yep, so we can even use Till Dance as well to draw extra cards. We are going to see a Nest Ball concluding for that Radiant Greninja and a Nest Ball going to grab another copy of Raging Bolt EX. All right, James, you have a chance to get ahead here. You've been given an opportunity, but we do need to see a KO. Otherwise, Iori, ah, this could be a ba very backwards to and fro game. We see a manual, oh no, we see a Teal Dance activation. Earthen Vessel was off That'll the Teal Dance. That'll do very nicely. Discard a card from your hand, search for any two basic 
energy, and that will, of course, include the fighting needed to show that bellowing thunder coming in, and that is absolutely huge. Ayori's best hope here was James missing the yep. fighting energy, missing the attack, yep. and then, oh, it's Ayori now can get the first KO and not let up. That is not happening now, and that is huge. James must be quite a relieved fellow right about now. Must be bellowing with happiness here with the way found that fighting energy. We did see that Earthen Vessel conclude another Till Dance activation, gets to draw one more card, has plenty of energy. I think we saw the manual attachment to the active there, Raging Bolt. So now Bellowing Thunder is live. 70 for each basic energy you discard from all or well, any of your Pokemon. So that's going to be immense, really. We see another Raging Bolt getting benched. So worth it, and there's a full bench now, Ross. We did mention that with a full bench, Raikou can start to be more of a factor. But here we are going to see the Bellowing Thunder activation, just counting up, going to discard two, three. I think we need one. Uh, we need we'll one need as one well. One more here. Yep, one off the okay. active. There we go. 240. James with a Bellowing Thunder KO takes his first two prize cards here in the game three. Iori, you need to respond, and you need to respond fast. Yeah, Raikou now can hit 220 with a full bench for Iori, which actually really, really helps. It's a two energy option. But of course, Maridon already has two energy, and. Oh, okay, he's got two energy, you need one from your hand, you're good. But I think we saw a peak of something yeah, we... in the hand there. Iron Valiant is currently in the hand. Two so... bent spaces, we're playing a Nestful here to use one of them. It's got to be Pheasant Dipity here, because, you know, three extra cards for nothing. Yes, yeah. that'll do nicely. So here, I mean, look, the deal is you KO the Raging Bolt. Yep. You get rid of all the energy on James's side of the board, and you go, look, you need four more energy. That is attachment for term, teal dance, Professor Sada. If you can pull that off, then yeah, I'm in a bad spot here. So yeah, take the KO, cross your fingers, hope it doesn't come to that. Right, so we sort of flipped the script there. I think it was Ultra Ball, Basic Energy, and Boss's orders were grabbed. So we need to see some switching cards though, if we'd like to use the Tachyon bits. Ultra Ball, gonna discard two copies of Basic Lightning. Let's see what Iori opts to grab here. Looks like Ursa Luna is being taken. Yeah, Ursa Luna, very good option. Hits a flat 240 against Raging Bolt EX. It's a five energy attack, but it's reduced by one for each prize card your opponent's taken. So right now it's a free energy attack. What is annoying, we do actually see one double turbo played in the deck. It's not prize this game, but that brings them 240 down to 220. So you're then actually short of a Raging yeah. Bolt, and Lightning Electric Generator will not work onto non-Lightning Pokemon like Blood Moon Ursa Luna. So it looks like Iori was just debating whether to use that Poke stop there. We are going to see it. One, two, and a third. So two copies of Nest Ball. Probably not the item you really want to see. We did see a Lightning Energy get discarded there as well. I think Iori hasn't had a problem getting basic Pokemon out of this game is we need to see energy and switching cards realistically, or at least a way to buff that damage. Because right now, 240 is outside the range of Proton Blaster. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things. Secret Box has not done anything in this matchup so far. Imagine if it was a Prime Catcher, for instance. You feel like that could have had more impact. I'm sure there's been plenty of times this weekend where Secret Box has been phenomenal for Iori, yeah. but it's not working out in this particular game. Now, we do have an electric generator in hand which it does look like is being played here. Yep, we do see it being played. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And two. two. Double hit. Nice. There Straight onto go. the Raikko. Now, here's the thing. You kind of need a future booster energy capsule or you need an Iron Valiant. And even though Maridon is a future Paradox Pokemon, this version in the card game came out in Scarlet and Violet, an actual Paradox Pokemon that can use cards like Future Boost Energy Capsule came out three sets later in Paradox Rift. Yeah. So it's not an eligible target for something like a Future Booster Energy Capsule. So Iron Valiant is, I believe, the only way to actually get there. Now, again, this is not the end of the world. No, it's not. Because you can Iron Valiant next turn to take the KO, Iori is actually keeping up with the prize trade here. But you're also leaving James with an energy on the board. Yes. So James does have a way to sort of leapfrog here and take two prize cards. However, that hand doesn't really look that great. He's going to have to try and find Professor Sada as we are going to see an energy retrieval. So there we are. That's going to grab two energy there, a basic fighting. And we're going to see a teal dance activation. Professor Sada here would be huge. Sandy Shocks isn't quite there yet. Pokestop could find Pokey Gear. 
That is an option. Ray Richard could actually push the Raging Bolt outside the range of Tachyon, but it's probably enough if James opts to do that. Probably wouldn't, but... Looks like we did see a pokey gear off the pokey stop there being grabbed. That was really important. Yeah, that could go and get the Professor Sada. I've got a point I want to make, but I'm going to make that in a moment because we need to have a look at this poker gear. Professor Sada, absolutely huge to be got on the hit. Does hit it. Well, done. that is a big hit off of that. Look at that smile there from James. He knew he was in a bit of trouble there if he didn't see the Professor Sada. Worth noting as well, we did see a switch car off that poker stop. That could, if that was used for every reason, that would actually heal damage as well. So worth keeping an eye on for that. Yeah, it would make it harder to get the KO with Iron Valiant. Yep. One important point, because Iori didn't take a KO, Pheasant Dipti isn't mm. live right now. And James did actually have that in hand, but obviously couldn't play because it wouldn't do very much. Now we get the two energy down, and wow. I think we are going to see it is a switch cart. James not really playing around the Iron Valiant, but he is playing around yeah. the Iron Valiant almost by accident here. But now we see a new Raging Bolt in the active, and this is wow. where it is getting very hairy for Iori here because you need to keep up with the prize trade, and now that pseudo KO on the last turn really isn't a KO, and you're losing your Maridon, you're losing three of your five energy on the board, and you're putting your opponent one KO away from winning. It was looking so good for Iori back in game one, but James has made a, well, reverse sweep, you called it. Yeah. It's still on. It is, as we do see a power pad being used to shuffle back in one copy of Professor Sada, and we do see a Bravery Charm getting attached to the active Raging Bolt, and now it has an absolutely monstrous, uh, monstrous 290 HP, bellowing thunder for a big KO there. James has two prize cards left. Iori's still on six, needs to respond, needs to respond fast if he wants to try and secure himself a win here. The hand currently doesn't look the greatest. Remember, we have seen two electric generators being used here already. So any you, any trying to power up a new attacker is going to be more difficult. Well, I am. The, the, the attack is easy. You use Blood Moon Ursa Luna. It's a single energy attack now. Your opponent's taken four prizes. So the attack is fine, but it's got 290 because of the bravery charm. So you need to find your one of vacuum or some kind of gusting to the yep. bench both of which i think are in hand by the way the biggest issue is you're not down one ko you're down yeah. two ko's here and that's the problem even if you get a ko this turn you're still a ko down so james has got two turns mm. to take that final ko that switch cart was absolutely gigantic and i i'm finding that this game it's, it's going to be really hard for Iori to get back into this game at this stage. Great game one. Really good decision, I believe, to concede in game two. Yes. To make sure you have plenty of time in game three, going second. It seemed like the right choice. And yet we sit here at the moment and it's not working like we might have hoped. No, you're right. This Two KOs back, as you mentioned. It's going to be tough. You have to rely on your opponent missing at this moment in time. It looks like Iori is going to play a nest ball and is going to grab the iron bundle. Remember that uh, hyper blower ability basically pushing your opponent's active out of the way. Then they have to promote something else. Yeah, and then again, you can KO either the teal mask. But if I'm James, I am happy. Oh, here comes the Iron Valiant. Finally, we see the Iron Valiant comes into the active. And this would have been a KO were it not for the switch car. Now we see a switch car into the iron bundle. And th there, is, there is still a chance that over the next couple of turns, Iron Valiant can actually turn that into a KO. Now we see the boss's orders onto the Greninja. We've got an academy at night coming down. And they pass, saying to James, I don't think you have enough energy, but James has energy, switch car. Energy retrieval, and here we go. We see energy, boss's orders. James takes a big KO and wins two games to one. James is still in absolutely good position here to make a run into the top cut of the 2024 World Championships. Yeah, James piloted that fantastically. Did lose game one, it could be very easy to get demoralized, but does win games two and three, the reverse sweep. Hearing plenty of cheers there from the crowd, as well as James did win, making a fantastic 